Premier Cayman Limited and another. This appeal to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council from the Court of Appeal of the Cayman Islands, whose flag is behind us, concerns the multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme operated by Bernard Madoff, the largest known fraud in history. The appeal raises points of law which are important not only in the law of the Cayman Islands, but also in the UK and the wider common law world. The claimant, Primeo, operated as an investment fund set up by Bank Austria in which customers could invest. The first defendant, Bank of Bermuda, a member of the HSBC banking group, was appointed by Primeo as the administrator of the fund, and the second defendant, HSBC, was appointed by Primeo as custodian of the assets supposedly held in the fund. Primeo's funds were invested in the vehicle which Mr. Madoff used for the fraud, an entity known as Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, or BILMIS for short. In order to fulfill its obligations as custodians of Primeo's assets, in 2002, HSBC appointed BILMIS as sub-custodian of the assets in which Primeo's funds were invested. From 2004, Primeo's funds were also invested in shares in companies known as feeder funds, which were associated with Mr. Madoff and which themselves invested their funds in Bilmis. In 2007, Primeo's direct investments in Bilmis were converted into shares in the feeder funds, so that all its investments in Bilmis were held indirectly as shares in the feeder funds. The defendants had administrator and custodian responsibilities in relation to the feeder funds. In fact, Bilmis only pretended to invest the funds it received. It misappropriated the money it received, apart from any sums which it had to pay out to customers in order to prop up the scheme. After the fraud was discovered in 2008, Primeo went into liquidation. In 2013, Primeo brought claims against the defendants for breach of their contractual duties as administrator and custodian of Primeo's assets. The trial judge dismissed Primeo's claims, principally on the basis that no loss had been caused by the defendants. The claims were also held to be barred by the rule against recovery of reflective loss, which prevents a shareholder, here Primeo, from recovering damages for loss suffered by the company in which its shares are held, here the feeder funds, which the company could itself recover from the same alleged wrongdoers, here the defendants. The Court of Appeal of the Cayman Islands dismissed Primeo's appeal, primarily on the basis that its claims were barred by the reflective loss rule. However, the Court also ruled on a range of other issues which would be relevant if Primeo succeeded in an appeal against the decision on reflective loss. Primeo then appealed to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, and the defendants also cross-appealed on various issues. The Judicial Committee heard the appeal against the reflective loss decision as a preliminary point, because if that appeal failed, then none of the other issues in the case would arise. In 2021, the Judicial Committee allowed Primeo's appeal against the reflective loss decision. This meant that the appeal and cross-appeal on the other issues decided by the judge and the Court of Appeal also had to be determined. And the Judicial Committee does that in a judgment handed down today. The issues concern three matters, the extent of liability and damages, whether Primeo's claims were brought in time, and whether any damages awarded to Primeo should be reduced because of contributory negligence. Dealing first with liability and damages, the Judicial Committee holds first that each time Primeo invested in Bilmis and Bilmis misappropriated the money for the purposes of the Ponzi scheme, Primeo suffered an immediate loss for which HSBC was liable. 
However, Primeo's losses during the period from 2002 to 2007 were mitigated by payments which Primeo received back from Bilness as purported re realizations of or returns on its investments. In fact, the amount of the repayments exceeded the amount of the payments made to Bilness, so there was no net loss suffered during that period. Secondly, the Judicial Committee holds that Bank of Bermuda was negligent in performing its contractual obligation as administrator uh, to calculate Primeo's net asset value from time to time in the period from 1996 to 2005 and was grossly negligent in making such calculations from 2005 onwards. The Judicial Committee rejects alternative claims for damages introduced by Primeo for the first time on appeal and also rejects a new defence introduced for the first time by the defendants on appeal. In accordance with the principle of finality in litigation, a party is required to advance its whole case at trial and may not introduce new claims or defences on appeal. Considering next the question whether Primeo brought its claim in time, the relevant time limit in the Cayman Islands is six years. However, the relevant legislation, which is in the same terms as the corresponding legislation in England and Wales, postpones the running of time where there has been a deliberate commission of a breach of duty in circumstances in which it is unlikely to be discovered for some time. The Judicial Committee holds that recklessness as to whether a breach of duty has been committed does not amount to the deliberate commission of a breach of duty. Primeo cannot show that either of the defendants deliberately breached the duties they owed it. Therefore, any of Primeo's rights of action against the defendants, which arose more than six years before it's brought its claim in 2013, and which are based on the fault of the defendants, are time barred. However, the legislation also postpones the running of time where there has been fraud on the part of the defendant's agent. On that basis, the Judicial Committee holds that Primeo's claims in respect of HSBC's responsibilities as custodian <coughs> are not time barred since there was fraud and deliberate concealment of relevant facts by Bilness which acted as HSBC's agent in fulfilling the obligations that HSBC owed to Primeo as the custodian of its assets. Considering finally the question of contributory negligence, the relevant legislation is again modelled on UK law and provides for damages to be adjusted where there has been fault on the part of a claimant and the case is one in which the defence of contributory negligence would have been available at common law. The Judicial Committee holds that prior to 1945, when the UK legislation was introduced, contributory negligence was available under the common law as a defence to a claim based on a breach of contract. Where there existed concurrent claims in contract and in tort for breach of a duty of care, and where negligence was an essential ingredient of both rights of action. The statutory defence of contributory negligence relied on is available in similar circumstances. It is not necessary that the claimant sues on a right of action in tort. It's sufficient that the right of action is founded on an act or omission which would give rise to liability in tort. On the facts, the Judicial Committee holds that the defence of contributory negligence is not available to HSBC because its duties in contract were not the same as any concurrent duty in tort. In respect to the claim against Bank of Bermuda, where the defence does apply, the Judicial Committee holds that the Court of Appeal was right to allow Primeo's appeal against a reduction of 75% in its damages as decided by the judge, and to rule instead that a reduction of 50% was appropriate, because the judge had not attached proper weight to the fact that Bank of Bermuda was a professional service provider which was as much at fault as Primeo in causing the damage. 